Hey, what's going on, everybody? Really excited about this one. We're going to talk about college basketball. The Miami Hurricanes are getting started really soon. Really excited to have Cal Friedman on the show. Cal uh, is a reporter for the Miami Hurricane, also for WVUM. And Cal, you were also at the exhibition game. There was only three of us there, so I know you know your your Miami Hurricanes basketball. Um, how's it going? Uh, how are you doing right now? I'm all right, man. Um, you know, football season one now, basketball season, get ready to go. It's a busy time for us at WVUM. Um, we're excited for both men's and women's season this year, but I think for men's wise, I'm very excited just to be able to go back to the Watsco Center. I'm going to be courtside for the first time since my freshman year, and I'm very excited just to see this team play. I think there's a lot of exciting things about this team. and I'm ready for the season to go. we got less than a week now. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It gets going, and um, just the way any season goes, all of a sudden you kind of get into that first month. The games come quick in basketball. Uh, they come in groupings. Uh, that's kind of where I see with the season. You know, they, they start off with four games before they've got that big tournament uh, there um, where they, you know, they start off with Dayton and they could possibly play KU and um, Alabama is also in that tournament. Those first four games, I feel like will be pivotal. Uh, Cal, before we get into this, and we also had a chance to, to be at practice, you know, um, some observations of watching practice that we can get into as well, as well as the exhibition game. But let, let's just recap people. I want to recap people real quick. If you did not pay attention to the Hurricanes offseason moves, multiple guys left the program, new guys in. So just to recap, Chris Likes goes to Arkansas. Elijah Linney goes back to Stony Brook, Earl Timberlake to, to Memphis. Matt Cross made the move to Louisville um, kind of late last year. And then Nicere Brooks goes to Ole Miss. So those guys are out. The guy's coming in. Sam Wardenberg, you get him back for a full season. He was out, um, obviously, last year with the injury. He did not play in a game. Jordan Miller, versatile forward, transfers in from George Mason. Uh, then you get Charlie Moore from DePaul, point guard. And then three freshman guards, um, Wuka Poplar, uh, Ja'Kai Robinson and Bensley Joseph. Okay, so the, that's kind of the roster. They're coming into the season, 12 scholarship guys. Injuries have been a big key the last few seasons. I want to start with Isaiah Wong, though, Cal. Um, he's their best player. Arguably, I think he's the best guard in the ACC. Um, I've had a chance to watch uh, a lot of college basketball already. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan. I've already seen a ton of exhibition games, probably about 10 to 15 already. Um, so it's been good. But your thoughts on Isaiah? I think this team... Um, he was very good last year, uh, but certainly has a chance to be um, an even better player this year. Uh, your, your thoughts on Isaiah um, and maybe what to expect this year? I mean, I expect big things. I think um, the preseason first team all ACC isn't just there for being, you know, just a statistic. I think he's earned that. I think the way he played last season, he played like a leader. Um, but I think what has stood out to me, at least from watching him at the end of last season to the start of this season with the preseason game and some of the practices is that he seems to just know the game so much better. And from his freshman year to his sophomore year, he said the biggest thing that he thought he took was the transition mentally to be able to learn, okay, where do I have to be in certain plays? How do I have to set up for certain things? But now I think after he went through the um, NBA draft process where he declared for the NBA draft and then decided to return to Miami while preserving his eligibility, I think he learned, okay, this is what I need to improve at. This is what I need to get better at. And you saw in the preseason exhibition, I mean, he scored 40 points, but at a lot of those points, he didn't really have to do too much. Um, he learned more where to be. He learned, you know, okay, I don't have to create all of my shots myself. I can sit in the corner as long as I can make my shots. And he had eight three-pointers in that game. That would have been a career high in that game alone, not just to mention the 40 points, but the fact that he's able to now – create a shot and also be a good spot up shooter for especially someone like Charlie Moore, who's come in and is going to create him a lot of shots, just like he did in the preseason exhibition. It's going to happen a lot in non-conference play. It's going to happen a lot in ACC play. So I expect very big things. He averaged 17 points last year. I mean, I think he can push for 20 this year without question um, with how much he might be asked to score for this team um, on offense, especially with that starting unit. I think he's clearly the best scorer in that starting unit. That's not saying much, but I think he's the, Clear best scorer in that starting unit. I think he's one of the best scorers in the ACC just because not only can he create his own shot, not only does he have his own set of dribble moves, but he also is now much better shooting the ball. So I'm very excited to watch Isaiah this year. Yeah, it's interesting. And also, I think the big key too, not only adding to his game or maybe doing things different, like you talked about um, to please scouts or, or to kind of impress, but he's got to be who he is too. You know, he's got to get to the rack. He's got to use his pull-ups. Um, kind of get to his spots. He's, he's pretty good, you know, honestly, and going to the basket and finishing mm -hmm. 
not just going to getting fouled, but I think he still has to play to his strengths. And now adding in this, this element, being a willing shooter. And I remember after the game, I asked him what it's like playing with Charlie and he felt like it was just so easy in terms of his spot ups. And I, I think you saw there was a sequence there where he floated out to th- the baseline three, Charlie just kicked it to him um, yeah. where Isaiah didn't have to bring up the ball and, and fight off a bunch of things. Again, opponent makes a difference. I understand that, that, that was not a talented opponent. Um, but you know, and then the very next possession, same thing, uh, Cam Augusti found him. So he just kind of spotted up, took a shot and it felt very easy to him. And I think, um, scoring effortlessly is, is certainly his strength. Um, I think he just added more to his game, like you said, but I think obviously the key playing to his strengths, um, it's going to be fun. I, I think, you know, coach Laranega, I thought it was interesting and, and coach has done this a few times where he just doesn't, he comes right out before a season says, look, I think this guy might be a one and done, or he's not going to be here. He did say Isaiah, this will likely be, be likely be his final year in year three, just believes that NBA scouts um, are telling him he'll be an NBA guard. He'll be a draft pick, that kind of thing. So, and it's worth watching. You know, I think if you're a little skeptical of Miami basketball, understandably so they've struggled, but Isaiah's fun to watch. I think the big thing, not only does he score in bunches, but he plays hard, Cal. I think we see that on both mm-hmm. ends. Um, so that's, it's fun. And, and anytime you have a guy that that's so good, um, scoring the ball, you have a chance, right? Like, you know, he's often going to be the best player on the court. Um, you know, ACC play, obviously a lot of factors come into it, but it, it'll be fun seeing how Isaiah, uh, moves along through the season. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, I think one other thing that Isaiah might add to his game this year being, as you mentioned, he might be the best player on the court in a lot of these ACC games when Miami plays you know, Syracuse, hypothetically, or Clemson or Wake Forest, you know, some, maybe not Syracuse, but some of those lower caliber teams in the ACC, not your Dukes or your North Carolinas, but you look at Isaiah and he might be the best player on the court at all times, which means it'll be interesting to see how teams play him this year. I think in year one, obviously teams didn't know how to play him. He was a freshman. He didn't play very much in non-conference play in that 2019-20 season. And then last year, people were still kind of learning who Isaiah Wong really is, whereas we've kind of seen him grow this entire time. I think what will be interesting this year is if Isaiah becomes more of a playmaker this year. Obviously, you've got Charlie Moore, you've got Cam Augusti, two guys that are good at moving the ball around. But with the way the Hurricanes have practiced and the way I think teams might start playing Isaiah with their better defenders and even maybe two defenders at a time, he hasn't averaged that many assists in his college career, but I look for more this year. If he's going to be able to drive in and you're going to have bodies crash in on him, he's going to know, okay, well, someone's going to be at the perimeter. Cam's going to be at the perimeter. Charlie's going to be at the perimeter. Two guys who can shoot very well. You got Jordan Miller, who you've just added, who has a three-point shot in him. And if he's able to distribute as well, you're looking at, you know, maybe 19 points, five rebounds, five assists, not unrealistic at all. So obviously Isaiah Wong, the biggest strength of this team. I want to flip it real quick to the biggest weakness. I think interior defense, I think rebounding. Um, and, and we'll see about scoring uh, with those with those post guys. But I think those particular things that have kind of plagued Miami in recent years, uh, the, the defense inside and the rebounding. We saw Nova Southeastern there in the exhibition game, out-rebounded Miami. Um, and asking coach, you know, are you concerned? He definitely feels like it is an issue that they're going to have to address guards will be big in this, right? They're going to have to come down and, and get defensive rebounds in particular. Mm-hmm. I, I couldn't believe the discrepancy there, uh, how many offensive rebounds they gave up in that game. Yeah. I thought that was disappointing. But where do you see this team defensive or, you know, in the post, just just with the guys they have? They started Sam Wardenberg at the five, Jordan Miller at the four. I think that's going to be interesting because of, you know, the things that Anthony Walker does bring to the team. And then just kind of rotation-wise, Dane Gack, um, is also an option. Uh, Rodney Miller to a lesser extent, but that's kind of the guys they'll, they'll go with. They have, you know, five post guys, um, four fives. Just what do you think of this group? And um, essentially, are, are you concerned uh, with this this group, this unit? I mean, I think it is the biggest concern on the team when you look at the entire roster down from starting line up to the entire bench. I think the center experience, or excuse me, the center group has the most experience amongst the roster. I mean, Roddy Miller's in his sixth year. Sam Wardenberg's in his sixth year. Um, you've got a lot of experience in there, but did not show in that game in Nova Southeastern. It didn't show that much last season. Mine were a middle-of-the-pack rebounding team. They were eighth in the ACC in offensive rebounding. They were seventh overall in rebounding. Um, the rebounding margin was barely over .01. So that definitely was a weak point. You get Sam Wardenberg back. You get Rodney Miller back. 
from their respective injuries, Wardenberg with the list Frank, Roddy Miller with his horny ACL. But overall, the Canes have to be better on the boards because in a lot of these games, you, you know, teams are going to have to make their own luck. Teams are going to have to earn second chance points. And that's going to how that might be how teams keep themselves in games against Miami, where if the Hurricanes are shooting well from the perimeter. The way you stay in the game is you just keep crashing the offensive boards. And what I thought was interesting in that preseason game, and albeit it was just one game and it was, you know, their first game as a unit against a team that isn't themselves. But we saw, you know, they went small. They went Jordan Miller at the four, who's 6'7", 195. And you got Wardenberg inside, who's, you know, he's still 6'11", but he's only 216. There's bigger guys on Nova Southeastern. But you had Anthony Walker, who was one of your better rebounders last season, especially towards the end of the year. He had two double-doubles at the end of the year. And he came off the bench, and he didn't actually get a chance to really put himself in that game because of foul trouble. So I think if the Hurricanes are going to want to be this team that isn't, you know, too weak on the glass. I think you got to go to Anthony a lot of the time this year. I think Jordan gives a lot though. Um, Jordan Miller did an exceptional job rebounding at George Mason. He averaged six rebounds as a guard last year. And I think he's capable of playing the four, but I think those fours have to step up. And I think overall the team has to step up. If you're going to play a small ball, it can't just be your four and your five grabbing rebounds. I think, you know, Cam, Isaiah, I, everyone's going to have, it's going to be a team effort. It's going to be a team effort this year to grab rebounds. You've got some tall guards and you just got to show them how to do that. It does feel like they do want to play a little bit small kind of, it feels like this is who they want to implement. It doesn't seem like, for example, like a Rodney Miller who had a large role a couple of years ago when he was healthy. Mm -hmm. It seems like they're moving away from that, right? It, it feels like, like you said, Jordan at the four is kind of that versatile forward that can kind of play a three, four, depending on matchups. Um, it, it feels like they want to play fast, play up tempo, kind of go to this mo more modernized basketball um, so there might be a little bit of transition with that. I, I think, again, when we look at the schedule, these first four games will be key. I think I think this team needs to get off to a good start. They're going to, you know, they should essentially win all four of these games. I know UCF has um, experience coming back, but for Miami to be in a, in a good place and, and feel good about themselves, I think 4-0 is certainly the goal going into that tournament. We'll see how things go there, but um, it will be interesting to kind of pay attention to lineups a little bit. And you mentioned those three guys because they don't have the depth a, a little bit, I, I'd be surprised if they put, for example, if they put all three of them in at the same time with Miller Walker and, and Sam um, to go with a bigger lineup, particularly against ACC opponents or, or those power five. But the thing is, then you don't have bench guys to rotate in the way you would like. So I don't know if that's really going to happen. Um, there's some other lineup things to maybe watch for a, a little bit, but I think for the most part, this team is pretty much set with those, those, those three guards. I, I don't, I think they're going to play 30 minutes a game. I, I think that the way I see it with those guards, I, I feel like they're going to play quite a bit. Um, I think, you know, Kyle, I, I want to get your take on Cam McGusty because when he's, we saw it late in the year, we've seen it in flashes. When he's healthy, his back's not an issue. He certainly can be a prolific scorer um, in the ACC. What, what do you think of Cam? What can he give this team? Again, he's trying to wrap up his whole career with just a, just a really solid um, beginning to end season. I mean, the way you said it, I think that applies for the entire team. When healthy, Cam McGussie is one of the better scorers in the ACC. And we saw it at the end of the year, like you said, he averaged 20 points a game towards the last six, seven games of the year. Uh, he was named second team all ACC tournament when he put up 17. But you did mention, you know, he got injured. He got injured in the middle of the season. That was a huge loss for Miami because you could clearly see the difference between Miami shooting beyond the arc in that first half of the year and in that second half, when they didn't have Cam and when they had Cam, they wound up being the worst three-point shooting team, the ACC last year. They shot 29.5%. But in games with Cam, they shot a lot better. Cam shot 32% from three last season, which is pretty good. But overall, what he gives you is he gives you a very versatile weapon. He's very good at driving inside. He gets a lot of points down low. He's also got a very good mid-range. And you have someone like that with that much experience not only the player that he is, but the experience to where he's able to show some of the younger guys. He's been able to help Isaiah. And if he's able to help some of the freshmen that might come in and play this season, then you, you have a very good presence in camp. He's a very mature head. He's a very good scorer. And he's going to give you everything he's got on any given night when he's healthy. And Charlie Moore, like I said, comes over from DePaul a couple years there. He was at KU for a couple years, played one, and then uh, started his career at Cal. And I rem you know, I, I watched almost all of his games at, at KU, and I didn't get to see him as much at DePaul. So I was kind of curious a little bit maybe how his games transformed or 
because he was putting up numbers. They weren't winning as many games as they would have liked while he was there. But um, just kind of see him in practice. He, he seems like a guy that, you know, looks like one of these veteran guys, you know, kind of just understands what college basketball is all about. He's pretty good with his pace, watching him in games, understands his pace and kind of when to attack and pull back. Also when to shoot, he will shoot, you know, he's a scoring guard. He's not um, going to create at the level that Chris likes did, for example, for his own shot, but he will look to pass, um, you know, kind of get guys involved. I, I don't think he, you know, he's not a big point guard uh, by any means, uh, maybe slightly taller than Chris, but you know, still a smaller side. So I think defensively we'll see how that plays against bigger guards in the ACC. I felt like that was an issue for Miami too um, in recent years, just not be able to match up quite as well as they would like at the guard position. But where do you think this team is with, with Charlie at point and kind of what he brings to, to the, to the team here on both ends? I absolutely love what Charlie Moore brings to the team. I think if you look at his years at Cal Berkeley and you look at his last two years to Paul, you see someone who is a very good mind of the game. You see his numbers. He's like, he's not a pure scorer, but he still can shoot the three efficiently. Well, he's a 32% three point shooter in his career. He shot over 34 and a half percent from downtown for DePaul last season. He's going to get you points there. He doesn't need the ball in his hands to create his own shot, but also he's a much better passer than Chris likes was um, likes was a fine passer, nothing against Chris likes, but I think when you look at more, this is someone who as, as his career has averaged around three assists a game. Um, he averaged four assists a game last year. He was seventh in assists per game in the, Big East last year. And I think with him creating, I mean, we saw what happened with Isaiah. Um, Miami were having trouble with the full court press in that preseason exhibition. When Charlie had the ball in his hands, he was unfazed. He would dribble up the court, no problem. He would keep a level head and he'd look around. He'd know where his teammates are and he'd be able to find Wong, who was able to make a couple corner threes, a couple threes from the wing. And overall, that's just what Charlie brings. He brings this maturity to this team, which I think, um, I think Cam said it in the um, off season that Miami hasn't had a point guard like this in a long time. You know, we've had a lot of scorers here with Chris likes, you had Angel Hernandez, you had Shane Larkin, but I think Charlie Moore is just a great creator of the game. I think he knows the game very well. And I think fans are going to love what they see out of him. Yeah. It'll be interesting because they certainly need that play. Um, so they do bring him in. It seems like, you know, they brought in three freshmen. One of them is uh, Bensley Joseph, a point guard. Um, Obviously, we did not see him in the exhibition game. Makes me think that he's just not, you know, that he's a little bit behind um, with that uh, because I felt like they would have got him in if, if he was truly a part of that mix. They played 10 guys. Uh, Rodney didn't play very much. So kind of a nine guy, nine man rotation, essentially. Um, it looks like they're going to, you know, kind of continue to go with Harlan Beverly as that backup spot. I think he struggled last year. Um, I know that they want to talk about his injuries that he kind of played through and eventually got shut down. Um, Harlan's got to be better with the ball if he's playing point. Um, I'm curious about Harlan. You know, he actually came in as a more highly regarded guy than Isaiah Wong, um, more highly regarded recruit um, in that same class. And obviously not, you know, if you're comparing the two, uh, Isaiah certainly vaulted himself. And I think Harlan has shown in flashes he can be a productive guy in terms of, you know, a guy that can get you a few assists, maybe knock down a three. Um, some rebounds here and there, steals, you know, kind of like an all-around guy, but not really putting together huge stat lines. But I am curious to see what he does because we talked about this starting five and then maybe how Anthony Walker fits in. But I think, you know, having that stability from the guard position off the bench where, you know, Isaiah is going to get a lot of attention on him and you want to be have him out there all the time, but, you know, he's going to need a break, you know, Cam as well. Um, while I think all the three of those guys will play 30 minutes, um, they're going to need quality minutes in the backcourt. I think it starts with Harlan. Um, what do you kind of see with the backcourt, um, the bench guys? Harlan, you, you touched on, we touched on Bensley Joseph, Wuga Poplar, who did play an exhibition game, and then Ja'Kai Robinson, who did not, those three freshmen. So your thoughts on, on the, the, the guards there? Well, what strikes me with Harlan is I think he was a higher recruit because of the team that he played for. I mean, he played on that Montverde team that had Cade Cunningham, who was a first overall pick, Moses Moody, who was a first round pick in that same draft class, Preston Sachua, who was a first round draft pick. And he was in the middle of just creating everything for that team. And when Harlan was at his best, he's someone who's very capable of moving the ball around. Um, he had nine assists against Wake Forest last year. He led Miami in assists per game, now albeit it's mostly because Chris Likes was out for the season, but he's someone that is capable with the ball in his hands, but he did commit a lot of turnovers last year. He did try and do a little too much at times last year. But I think when we touched on earlier about how the Hurricanes are going to be a small ball team, you have to have three guards 
that can run transition that I think the way that Miami can, I think your capabilities with Charlie Moore, Bensley, Joseph, even though we haven't seen him yet, and Harlan Beverly, those are three guards that are very good at moving the ball around, very good at pushing tempo. And I think that's exactly what Jim Laranaga was looking for when he got Harlan Beverly, when he got Charlie Moore in the transfer portal, and when he recruited Bensley Joseph this last year. Now, Joseph is an interesting case because he injured his ankle in his final season in high school. You haven't seen him play in a long time. He averaged 15 points for Cushing Academy before he went to uh, Putnam Science Academy. But those are three guards that I think can do wonders this year for Miami if they put themselves in the right opposite opportunities. If they try and force it too much, if they try and play a little too much hero ball, then Miami could turn it over a decent amount and you could lead to some games getting out of hand early. But if those three stick within themselves, trust their teammates, know the playbook, or excuse me, know the plays, that's like a football line. You still, you know the plays, you're able to run the plays, which when we went to practice, I thought some of those plays were very clever. And you got three guards who I think can understand and know how to move the ball around. I think that, I don't have much worries with those three. I don't have much more worries with Charlie Moore, Harlan Beverly, and Bensley Joseph. Far and I think that, yeah, and I think yeah. what we saw in practice too, the way they want to move the ball, kind of move at a quicker pace too. I think the big key too is the way guys move off the ball will be key for this team. For example, like mm -hmm. when Isaiah has the ball, right? Um, don't just watch him create. Definitely try to pick different spots. I think that's the one thing you see at upper level basketball, um, especially in the NBA. The guys do a really good job of cutting off the ball um, essentially drive. It looks like a drive to the basket without the ball, the way they cut so well sometimes. And I think that'll be key for Miami to, to either continue to get open. If you're covered, continue to shift, particularly on the perimeter, you know, slide down uh, to that baseline spot. Uh, for, for example, if guys are cutting to the middle, kind of just make sure you're always moving. I think that'll be a key for this team. Um, like I said, the, the start will be important. I, I think one thing I do want to mention is look, Miami's not had the success that they would like in these last few years. But when we were out at practice, and I feel like it's been this, um, the times that we've gotten to be out there over the last few years, there's still a positive energy uh, with that team, right? Like everybody's clapping. There seems to be, guys seem to ha be happy to be there. Again, we're not out there all the time, but these are just my impressions of seeing this team. I think Jim Laranaga and his staff do a good job of keeping a positive environment, even if the, the results aren't going well or um, the game. So I think that they are looking for that. Um, to continue maybe to help help them through this. And like I said, this I'm very curious to see how the start of the season goes. Um, I think they've got a chance to build up some positive momentum. And certainly everything changes once you get into ACC play, and hopefully we can uh, catch back up and do that. But I, I think it'll be very interesting. They're looking for a bounce back year. I think getting into the postseason would be big for this team, um, even if it was an NIT bid, just because they've not done that um, in the last few years. And you're always trying to build, right? Like you're always... Wherever you're at, you're trying to be better than the year before, um, continue to that upswing. And uh, there's many ACC teams looking to build on what they did last year. Um, so it's very competitive still. Uh, this teams at the top are obviously really good, but that pack is, um, you know, a lot of teams in that, that middle there. Cal, um, we're going to wrap this up, man. There's a lot to talk about. We've already talked about a lot, but is there maybe one or two keys um, for this team you think maybe to be successful that, that we either we haven't touched on or, or that you would like to reemphasize? I mean, I think the most important thing that we saw from the preseason exhibition is this team's going to score, but at the same time, this team looks like it's going to give up a decent amount of points. And I think that game, Laranega said it after the game, actually, he said, like, this might be the perfect wake-up call. And I think they have to come out, they have to play well on offense, but their defense has to be the most important thing. You can't give up free buckets like they did against Nova Southeastern. You can't allow 18 offensive rebounds against a Division II team and expect to beat teams in the ACC. Um, they open up with some opponents that maybe don't have the biggest centers in uh, UCF and FAU and Dayton in the tournament and either Kansas or North Texas. You don't open up with too many teams where you have to worry about the center position, but you need to worry as a team about protecting the paint. If you are giving up a lot of points in the paint, you're not going to win basketball games. It doesn't matter how many points you score, but if an opponent's just going to be able to walk in and score on Miami, like a couple teams did last season, when you look at Georgia Tech, how many dunks they had in that game where Miami were embarrassed at home. When you look at the Florida State game, they were just too easy inside. Guys like Raekwon Gray and Moses Wright are going to have field days against Miami when they're playing that poorly defensively. But I have confidence that, you know, you get Sam Wardenberg back, and while he's not a new player, it practically feels like he's a new player because he didn't play all last season, and he used that time last year to work on maybe the mechanics in his game. He said um, a couple earlier 
or excuse me, a couple of weeks ago in a press conference that this is the best he's felt about his game because he's been able to focus on the small parts of it. And I think if this team focuses on the small parts of their game, being able to, you know, just move the ball around, create some easy shots, don't get flustered when they go behind, don't try and play hero ball, play together. I think this team will realize how much talent's on this roster in a non-conference play. If you're able to, like you said, start 4-0 and and then maybe get a statement win against Dayton or North Texas or even Kansas if possible, and then you go and you play Penn State and you get a win there in Happy Valley, I mean, the confidence is going to keep flowing and going into ACC play. You need that confidence to be high because you're going to be playing good teams every single night. Yeah, just wrapping this. No, a lot of a lot of po- positive takes, a lot of interesting takes. Kyle, we've talked about a lot. Uh, I was kind of thinking about this starting lineup, this group, a, a very a lot of experience, and I haven't done the math, but it kind of reminds me. I was watching the Florida exhibition game the other day, and the broadcasters made the point that Florida's starting lineup is older than the Oklahoma City Thunder's starting lineup, and that just kind of shows you with where college basketball is with, with certain teams. And I think Miami, if we were to think about it, they do have a lot of six year guys. And um, so I, I think that'll be a factor. And, and certainly all this plays into having Isaiah Wong, like we started the show with, you know, having a guy like that uh, as your anchor, as your best player. Like I said, he could arguably be the best guard in the, in the conference. And I think that's a, a big thing because you can create shots, you can score. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how these guys do staying healthy, obviously key, but also when the guys are out there, they have to be productive on both ends. Um, finding roles will be key. Like I said, we've been talking about this four no start as a possibility. We'll see. And obviously if they don't, they just got to continue to work um, and improve as they kind of establish their roles and move forward. So Cal, I'll let you get going, man. Um, definitely appreciate you. Uh, I've been talking to you a little bit, um, a little bit more now as we get into season. But like I said, I know you've been paying attention to this hoop squad. Um, hopefully we can do this again. Um, and definitely for people watching, drop in the comments, uh, definitely let me know, let us know what you think of this team. And if there's some things that you'd like to talk about um, or questions, definitely do that. So I def- definitely want to thank everybody for watching. Thank you, Kyle, for joining the show, man. Thank you so much. I'm very excited for this season. We'll be there in less than a week. That'll be fun. All right. Sounds good.